Yes, it's open. All right, all right, all right. Right on, right on, right. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is where we're supposed to be worshiping, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's get going. Okay, I'm getting ready to take your calls live in one minute. I am getting ready to take your calls live in one minute. In one minute. I'm getting ready to take your calls, okay? Amen. All right. Get ready to take your calls live in one minute. One eight hundred six eight six ten ninety seven. One eight hundred six eight six ten ninety seven. One eight hundred six eight six ten ninety seven. Did you hear that? One eight hundred six eight six ten ninety seven. I'm getting ready to take your calls. One eight hundred six eight six ten ninety seven. I'm going to say that slowly, and you're going to write it down. 1-800-686-1097. Got it? That prophetic number seven is always in everything that we do here at the Car Chronicles. Woo, I tell ya. I tell ya, I tell ya, I tell ya. Hey guys, how you doing? This is Jamila Young Mitchell, live with the Car Chronicles. We have been waiting for this opportunity. Don't worry, I'm going to be taking your calls very quickly. The number again is 1-800-686-1097.
Give us a bit. Remember, call in. I heard your cry from this morning. I understand that you need someone to pray for you. You even have questions from last night's Girl Talk. Understand, we are here. We are live, raw, and uncut. Right now, I want you to pick up that phone. Call 1-800-686-1097. I heard you. God heard you. I want to hear your heart. This is why I am here. I want to hear your heart. I'm going to put my specs on, and I'm waiting for your call, 1-800-686-1097. We are live. This is what we have been waiting for. It is ministry. It is raw. It is cut. Gwendolyn Wilson. Gwendolyn Wilson just called us. Everyone knows that we are fasting, and we are praying for you all. This is Jamela Young Mitchell, and every time you click my button, I'm going to tell you the truth. We are live, we are raw, we are uncut, and this is what we are doing. We are doing ministry at its best. And now we're going to receive our phone calls. I'm going to give you that number again before I speak to Gwendolyn, 1-800-686-1097. Gwendolyn Wilson. Gwendolyn Wilson said that her son is on his way to court. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to pray for her son. We're going to pray. Gwendolyn, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to take this call right now. Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn, are you there? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Gwendolyn, how are you? How are you? Wonderful, Gwendolyn. I understand that your son is going to court. He has a court case coming up. Well, he went this morning. He said he told me, but I mean, I was forgot he had to go because okay. I'm in Virginia and he's down in Florida. Okay, okay. Well, he's down in Florida. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And so, what we're going to do is do you know the outcome of his case? Okay. right now i want to pray for your son i want to pray that god open up his understanding and god give him the wisdom and the knowledge to answer everything that he must answer accordingly and not trip himself up by giving too much information understand a public defender is what it is it's someone that is going to be paid to defend the public having a private attorney i understand that sometimes we can't afford that but we are believing that God is going to answer everything that is before this case. And so even across the board, mothers, if you are listening to me, we always talk about the mother and the son and the relationships between a mother and a son or a child. Everyone under the sound of my voice, Gwendolyn, what I want you to do, we're going to touch and agree for your son. But we're also going to touch and agree with people who are in situations such as yours, Gwendolyn, that have a child that is getting ready to go before the judge for a case. So let's pray right now, Gwendolyn, shall we? Okay? Yes, yes. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we ask that you would go right now to Florida. Go to that state. Gwendolyn Wilson right now has a son 
that is going before a court. He's going before counsel, God. And God, he is fighting for his life. God, no matter if it's 10 years, 20 years, 5 years, we know that you can say time served. God, we understand that you're the judge and you're the juror, God. Whatever the outcome is, God, we understand it will be well. Open up his intellect and his understanding, God, to understand and give him the wisdom and the knowledge, God, that he needs, God, with the public defender to go to his case and it will be well god in the name of jesus i ask that you would look on gwendolyn give her everything that she needs financially god to go with her son through this situation god god you could send a ram in a bush with two feet god to give her what she needs god even if it be your will for her to get an attorney, not a public defender. God, go with him, God, if he's in the cell, God, and speak to him, God. For God, there are no bars that can hold the prayers of the righteous, God, that are veiling right now. God, give her a sweet peace and a sweet rest. That all things work together for good in the name of Jesus because we love you. God, right now, speak to her son, God. Let him understand that it shall be well, God. That, Lord God, you can do the undoable and fix the unfixable. God, right now, you can save, set free, and deliver even in a jail cell. God, give him the knowledge that he needs, God. To, Lord God, speak to the judge and the jurors, God, with confidence knowing that you hold the future despite it all. God, we thank you, God. And we bless your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Gwendolyn. And we will be praying for your son. And I love you. And give God, you're crying right now. But give God those tears, sweetie. Because that is the only language God interprets best. God bless you. And I'll be praying for you, okay? Bless you, baby. Bless you. Bye-bye. Amen. We thank God for that. The effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And even though she is in Florida, the prayers are heard throughout the airways, the highways, and the byways. And so we thank you. We're going to take another call right now. Ashley Bellinger, how are you? Ashley, are you there? Ashley has eight children and she needs strength. And everyone knows that if you follow Jamila Young Mitchell and the Carl Chronicles family, we break the yokes of bondage with sadness and depression. I cannot stand depression. It is a thief and it is a robber that does not want you to move forward in life. And that chain go break over Ashley's life. Amen. So we're going to let her call in and we're going to deal with her and we're going to do what the word of God said. We're going to take iron. And we're going to take iron and we're going to sharpen it right now. And we're going to pray over her. And I promise you, the yokes of bondage is going to break right now, baby. So we're waiting for Ashley to give us a call. And everybody that's under the sound of my voice, please call in 1-800-686-1097. I'm going to say that again. Write it down. 1-800-686-1097. And when Ashley comes in, we're going to call and we're going to pray. And we're going to band together and we're going to pray for her that she gets her strength. Depression is a horrible thing. Even this morning, you know, I heard about the prayers of everyone that needs it. And from this morning, call in. Let's talk, okay? Let's talk to Ashley right now. Ashley, are you there? Hey, baby. Ashley, hold on. Wait a minute. Let's give a station identification. Now, you know who I am, right, Ashley, baby? Yes, ma'am. And what we ain't going to do is say ma'am. Call me boo-boo sugar. Call me something other than that. I'm 46 years old and I'm from Brooklyn. And I know that's a Southern thing, but we're going to say. So let's try that again. Hey, Ashley, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? There you go. Hey, girlfriend, how are you? Ashley, I understand that you're a mother of eight. And I want to commend you for just birthing eight children. God bless you. I got two and they about to drive me crazy. But the devil is a liar. And I understand that you're praying. You you need strength for depression. We're going to pray about that. But, but I just want to hear about your depression for a brief moment. Can you tell me how you got to that point? Well, it's just been a whole, you know, a whole lot of been going on in my life. Okay. You know, um, I only have one sister. Okay. And, you know, uh, Situation happened with me and that one sister, you know, with okay. a guy that I'm with, where did I have six children by? Okay. And, you know, I just forgave that situation and, like, I don't have nobody to talk to. Right. You know, nobody that I can depend on. I understand. Besides my sister, but it was broken. Okay, okay. And my mama, my mama deals and my dad are all here, so it's like I have nobody to speak to. Okay. About my mama, but nobody to holler out about. I got you. 
Uh -huh. And I just hold it in. Okay. Well, actually, what I don't want you to do is hold it in. Understand that you said that um, you don't have anyone to talk to. You have the world. One thing about depression, it tricks us. And it makes us feel like we don't have anybody. I want everyone under the sound of my voice to hear me. Depression tricks you. It gets in your mind and it makes you think that you have absolutely nobody. The devil is a liar and his feet stink. You have someone. God sits on the throne and he listens to you. You said that you had your sister. And this morning what got us here is that we were talking about how sibling rivalry is and how we're having all these problems with um, our sister. Whatever the issue is, forgive her. And when you forgive your sister, what it does, it allows God to operate in your life. Even though you have six, six, six children or eight children and whatever the dynamics of with this young man in your life, Understand that there is nothing too hard for God, even the situation with your children, even the situation with the father, even the situation with the child's biological father or not, whatever it is, let's give it to God. What I'm going to pray about is that God sends you a friend. I'm not saying a boyfriend or a boo. I'm saying a friend. The Bible says, what greater love than a man has than someone that has someone that sticks closer than a brother. And sometimes it's not always our biological siblings, and that can hurt. Let's pray for God to deal with the pain that you have that was caused by the sibling rivalry. But also, let's pray that God gives you a friend. But I want you to fight depression. It hurts. It gets in your back. It gets in your mind. And you feel that you're not worthy of friendship or love. You are worthy of that. So let's pray right now, Ashley. But I also want you to do something when we get off the phone. I want you to do something for yourself. Do something for yourself, meaning even if you cannot afford a makeover, give yourself one by yourself. Even if you cannot afford to do something big, do something small. Go in a dollar store and buy a favorite lipstick. What are you doing is you're identifying that you're worthy of something. And when you take one step, God will take two. When you take two steps, God will kick down a wall. So let's pray, Ashley. And you do have people that love you. You know that. Yeah. You got six kids, seven kids, eight kids. I believe they love you. Let's pray, mommy. Father God, in the name of the Jesus, I that you would look upon Ashley. Look upon her circumstances, God, right now. God, you spoke this morning about the spirit of forgiveness resonating in our lives to the point where we can come together and allow you to operate. Allow the operation of forgiveness to penetrate the hearts of both sisters. That they will come together in Christian love and celebrate life together. I bond the spirit of depression over her life. Give her everything that she needs financially to be the provider for her children. And even if this young man is in her life causing the seed of discord, do God and me a favor and God allow her the strength to move forward knowing that all things work together for good because we love you. I thank you, Ashley, and I will be praying for you, okay? Kiss the babies and you a rocking good mother and don't forget that. Your kids need you, okay? Thank you. Bless you, baby. I'll talk to you later. I'll be praying. God bless you. Amen. We thank you for that. We have another caller, and we're going to go to this other caller. Car Chronicles, understand that we've got ladies, but we got brothers who are watching us, too. And so I want you to click tag and share. Click tag and share, because our brothers are even calling. David Aya is calling. He needs prayer for his sister. David is calling. Understand that the brothers of CCM, we applaud you and we thank you for being part of the Call Chronicles family. We're waiting for David to give us a call. David, we're standing in the gap for your sister. And I want you to know that no matter what it is, the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous, honey baby child, they avail it much. And so this is what we're going to do. We're welcoming everybody to call 1-800-686-686. 1097. I'm going to say that again. 1-800-686-1097. God is doing something in the Car Chronicles family. You must follow us. You must follow us. You must follow us. David, if you're listening, understand. We are praying for your sister. We are praying for your sister. Quiana, Quiana, Quina. Understand the Call Prodigal's family. If I cannot pronounce your name, you get a nickname. And I'm going to call her Q. Q 
If Q is available, Q, we are waiting for your call. We lost David, but David, if you're listening to us by way of Facebook, we want you to know that we are praying for your sister. We don't know what the problem is, but God knows. And I know that he's going to heal. He's going to set free, deliver whatever your circumstances is. God is going to do the new thing in it. Understand, Q, are you there? If you're not there, we're going to move on to the next caller. Understand, 1-800-686-1097 is the phone number. 1-800-686-1097 is the phone number. We had Q and she was on the call. We don't know what happened to that call, but we understand that we're praying anyway. Understand, we heard this morning the cries of God's people. We heard you cry out for the sibling rivalry, the jealousy, the backstabbing, the rumors that kind of infiltrated the family and caused the family structure to fall apart. This is why we're here. We are here because we want you to know that Car Chronicles are banding together and we are praying. People are hurting all over the world and you need something. This is free therapy that we can tell you how God is the person to handle every circumstance and every situation. We're going to see if Q has finally got the call. Let's see. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. This is Jamila Young Mitchell. God bless you. How are you? Good. Now, I want you to do me a favor. Can you say your name appropriately? Wanda. Wanda. Okay, I can say that name. Hey, Wanda, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Wonderful, Wanda. Where are you calling from? Detroit, Michigan. Detroit. We love Detroit. We love Detroit. And I'm praying we for... Love you too. Oh, you do? Thank you, boo, boo I'm going to be doing a conference there. Don't worry. I'm calling. I'm going all over the world. I just got to get there. Tell me what's going on with you, Wanda. Oh, I know about that. Oh, I sure will be posting it. What's going on, girl? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I, I, post, I repost your car chronicles every single day. Oh, I'm thank working. you. I'm working on my Friday. Thank you. Thank you. I thank love you. you. I love I you. Click your button and tell me the truth. All the time. Whether you want to hear it or not, you click the button, I'm going to tell you the truth. Yes, you do. So tell me why you calling me, baby. Lord. And my son is, he'll be 16. Oh, I have one of those. I have one of those. And I already feel your pain. I, I already feel your pain. Uh-huh. They can't get along. Okay. It breaks my heart. It breaks my immune system down. For yeah. Me. Actually, I'm calling you from work right now. Oh, Lord. When hurry they, up. Hurry up. When they call me arguing on that phone. Yeah. Just, yeah. It just kills my spirit. I yeah. Can't, I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you mean. I have a daughter and she just turned 20 yesterday and I have a son who's 16. And because she's in college and he is home, it's really good because they're not in the same dynamic. But when they get together, baby. And you said to yourself, when they fight, I remember one time my kids got into a fight over Fruit Loops. A physical, you laughing. It was a physical altercation over Fruit Loops, Wanda. And I understand how it is. I yeah, I feel your pain. I understand what it is because it makes us, it's draining. It is. It's draining. Physically, emotionally, it, it, it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pray and ask God. See, people, um, you, you got to, prayer is a conversation, but understand that you've got to know how to pray specifically what to ask for. And so specifically because I feel your pain because Wanda, I'm in your shoes. I'm going to pray a prayer to specifically guide you on how to master a plan to get these two individuals to get along. Understand? And so what we're going to do is we're going to pray not just for peace in your home, but pray that God open up the understanding that they understand the burden they're putting on their mother. I'm going to also say this. Wanda, hear me. You guys that are under the sound of my voice that have children. I need you to hear what I'm about to say. Sometimes your voice becomes muted. Your voice no longer becomes affected because you are a parent. It takes someone else to convey what you're trying to say. It's that old cliche, familiarity breeds contentment. Have you ever seen a child and they're acting up and a stranger goes by and say, you better act right and they pull it together? 
That's how effective it is when it's someone else and not a family member. Wanda, you might have to go and get them counseling, sweetie, so you can see exactly what they're so angry about. It could be jealousy or sibling rivalry that you don't even know. So Wanda, let's pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come before you with Wanda from Detroit. God, we thank you, oh God, for her recognizing that there is a problem, God. Open up her intellect to realize that she's a good mother and she's doing the best that she can. But God, the spirit of Cain and Abel has crept in these siblings. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I command Shalom in the home to resonate through her house before she turns the key in the door at work. God, right now, do the new thing. God, give her a mastermind ability how to separate the two, bring them together in love, and understand that they have each other when all else fails. God, give her the strength and the magnitude to sustain the process of maturity in her own. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, dear God. Amen. Wanda, I love you. I thank you so much. Understand, find another voice besides your own, okay? I love you, Wanda, from Detroit. I love you. God bless you, baby. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Amen. God bless you. I am so excited that everyone is calling. I am so excited that everyone is calling. Let's try to take another call because they're coming in. Ruby. Ruby, how are you? Ruby, I want to pray for you. Ruby Chesser, I'm going to pray for you. Please, please call in. Ruby, hi, sweetie. How are you? Are you there, Ruby? Ruby, hi, baby. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Okay. I'm wonderful. Ruby, I thank you for calling. And I'm reading your testimony right now. And I want you to hear me, okay, Ruby? Okay. Right now, I hear and I can see that you're crying. And, and I want you to know that it's okay. But I want to say something to you. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I say sorry on behalf of the violation. That's okay, baby. I know. Because of the violation at 16. I feel your pain. I want to say, Ruby, I'm so sorry. That you feel that you are not protected because it's clear that you were not. I'm sorry for the decision that someone made to take what was precious from you and not respect the boundaries in your body as a mature 16 year old. I'm sorry that that happened to you and now you are an adult trying to figure it out with these bruises. But I want you to know that there is a savior that can heal it all, honey. It's okay. And it's going to be okay. And it is not your fault. So you need to dispel that. That when people who have been raped and violated think that it's something that they did, you need to understand, baby, it was not anything that you did to deserve that. And I'm so sorry that happened to you, baby. Every tear that you're crying right now, Ruby, God interprets them best. I love you. And I hope you love yourself. Yeah. Ruby, can I pray for you? Yeah, please. Sure. Father God, in the name of Jesus, even everyone under the sound of my voice who have dealt with rape, who have been dealing with all types of assault, right now in the name of Jesus, I ask, oh God, that you please heal the hurt that someone else called. Heal the hurt that someone else caused, God, and take the pain from their past, God, and ignite a beautiful future, letting them understand that this shall not hold them back. From you doing the miraculous work in their life. That the violation shall not hold back the promises of God. 
that the violation and the violator will come and even if they don't say sorry, they will have it in them to understand that I forgive you even if you don't open up your mouth and give me the apology needed. God began to do a new work in her mind, her body, in her soul, and in her spirit, knowing that she's fearfully and wonderfully made. And every wound that she has, God, that she is dealing with in secret, God, you can make it well right now today. Give her a new mind today. Give her a new body and a new spirit today, that spirit that was broken through violation. God, replenish it and refurbish it in Jesus' name. I know it can be well. Even different fears that she has, oh God, I cast out all fear with the perfect love and healing power of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ruby, I love you, Ruby. I love you. And you are beautiful. Know that, okay? Know that. All right, I love you. Bye-bye, sweetie. Bye-bye. Bye. Amen. We're going to take another call. We're going to take a call from Brenda Sims. Brenda Sims. We're going to be talking about restoration of her marriage, Brenda. God bless you, Bren. How are you, sweetheart? God bless you. I love you so much. And I love you even more, boo boo. Love you even more. Girl, I'm reading about restoration of your marriage and your children will draw closer to the Lord. Honey, that is a prayer. Yes. Okay. I would like to, me and my husband been separated for years. He's been, you know, he's out there in the street. So I guess he's doing it up. Okay. I forgive him for everything. Right. I'm not angry with the girl that he's living with. Okay. I want my husband to come home. Okay. The Lord has not given me a heart for divorce. Okay. mind body and soul and so even though you've cleaned out the closet and you spoke to the Lord about your marriage did he in fact indeed confirm that your husband is coming home did he confirm it yeah. okay did your husband you both sat down with a counselor and you both spoke about reconciliation Okay, so my question to you is, when your did you and your husband talk about reconciliation? Did he verbally say he was coming home and is he doing what he has to do to move his stuff back into the closet that you cleaned out? No. Okay, so. We've talked before, but he hasn't actively said anything. Okay, so. What I want you to know is the Bible said, with all thy getting, get an understanding. And you've got to go with an understanding that even though you forgave him, does not necessarily mean reconciliation will be what it's going to be. Unless he puts forth an action of showing you that I want the marriage. Oftentimes, Brenda, most people fight so much for marriage that they're the only ones fighting. It takes two individuals to fight in a marriage or you're fighting by yourself. If God said that he is bringing him back, understand God confirms his word. Out of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established, but he'll confirm that thing. So what I need you to do is, yes, we're fasting and we're praying. In fact, fast ended at 12 o'clock. Even though we're fasting and praying, we're going to allow God to confirm what he said. But don't you make a move until you know it's God. Okay? Okay. So let's... Now, I, I propose... I, 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 I propose a divorce to him. Okay. And everything that he 